does seem a little bit like overkill in this instance. Andy isn't wearing any armour, and he may well be, especially in this setting, in a tournament ring, in which we are fighting for honour and to earn points, not necessarily to run each other through. Yeah. So, if you were wearing armour, full lovely um, plate harness, shiny in the sun, beautiful. He's got his helmet on. Now, he is going to be practically impervious to me hacking and slashing at him. That is what armour is designed to do. In fact, I've had more damage to my sword. So I need to seek out those vulnerable parts on Andy. So, for example, helmet on, visor down. He can see out of the visor, so if I was close enough, I could push my blade through the visor into his eyeball and up into his brain. Shot, 
Now, this is what I'm going to try and shove this blade into her neck. But she turns to protect it. So from here, what I have to do is just drive through. Now, I've got to shove it where I need it, up against the neck. But actually, I kind of needed to get to the shelf a bit, so maybe push it. Oh, there we go, now it's worked. Right. And then with a gentle soaring action. I don't know, but possibly that could be it. So, what India and I have done is we've sort of taken these pictures and sewn them together to see if these people who highlight the style, techniques, but also the intentions of these fight masters. Not real fighting. Real fighting, one is quite boring and obviously is deadly. And as my uh, friend mentioned, we're not allowed to kill any more staff here. But, I'll show you what, for example, if India was a brilliant sword person that she was, and she just came thundering in, fights of this queen. So we're using that basically in her insides and our outsides. But the other thing is, it's generally not the person in front of you that's going to kill you. It's the person to the left or the right or behind you that just stabs you as you walk past. So you can't spend any real time fighting one person heroically on the battlefield. So that's why we've sort of artificially put loads of techniques together. Of course, the fight has to start, and there's about eight starting positions, so you use selected one. Yes, very high line one, aggressive. It's known as the crown, translates as the colonel. So I would take that one that's sometimes known as the fool's start. The album, that could be foolish because my point of my sword is pointing towards earth worms rather than the bad person with the sword. But it could be my opponent's foolish because if they had bad technique, way up there. So just a twitch and she's already at the shish about it. So she doesn't want to use the sword. But India is brilliant. So they would just be nice to each other, isn't it? So she's not going to make that initial movement the body and sell what she's going to do. She's going to disguise it, set the sword first, it then becomes the threat, and my own debate is the debate. So, Annie's right, I'm not going to go straight on because I risk coming a shish kebab. So, I'm going to go around him. I've noticed that back leg is currently left undefended. And if I chop it off just below the knee, you won't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> she said, will it work? I said, no. And I was right. <laughs> Okay. Right. Okay, so this is the most important thing. Get rid of the target. Turn the base into attack. So flicking it round, as in they said, you can use these swords as well, have they easily. To return the problem, we're going to take in his leg off. Move the target out of the way. First rule of defence is run away. So I'm moving that target, placing the sword as extra insurance. Again, we're stopping to talk, but it would be one fluid movement. That will turn into this. Then, yeah, out of the way, spin, trying to take head from shoulder. Stop it. Using the past the blade that Andy mentioned. Now from here I've got several options, but what I'm going to do is use my cross to speed up the slice of Andy's stomach. Check it. That would never work. Partly because I had the reaction to the young panther. <laughs> right, anyway, out of the way, make a cross for the uh, uh, face, underneath, hand on the pommel for the extra reach, come up underneath the jaw, through the tongue, and into the brain. That way. Now, I'm blocking it, I seem like I have everything under control, but I don't, because I'm really close to this barrier. He's pushing me into the corner and making me vulnerable, so what I need to do now is push back. And what I'm going to do is slide my blade all the way down his, chop off his fingers, but then he definitely can't hold on to the sword. Oh, hasn't worked. However, the point of my sword is now pointing towards Andy's top six pack. <laughs> It's in the script, right? <laughs> so from here, I would go for a thrust. Out the way, we go straight down the middle. Right in the parry, his blade is down, out the way, just simply come round and chop off his head. Step back on this occasion, I'm not happy you saw me do the slide. Use the sword as simply as a pivot. No one's going to be able to hold that. He just pops out, and then what? Winner, loser. Yes. Right, so let's finish our interpretation, our demonstration. And then afterwards, you can come and hold on to the sword if you like. But I thought just as a bit of fun on a Saturday morning, make sure we're, we're alive and awake, we would uh, change the quote, say we, I, 
I've come up with an idea of changing the choreography, but you should understand almost inevitably what's going on. Because the choreography from the hips up to the stay the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the direction of one of my attacks. You can do the same. So you should be the same, but you're just fighting from a different angle. Look, I should be. It's all right. Come on, angle. Do it. Same for a change direction. Same for a change direction. 